Okay, here is my 1970 Chevelle SS396 project car that I will be doing a walk around video of. The big block only steering intermediate shaft has been changed out so that has been swapped. I believe that is the factory hole for the tack harness. There's also a hole down here which I believe is for the cowl induction and or turbo 400 kick down. Master cylinder was replaced at some point but I believe that's going to be the original master cylinder booster. Here's the cowl tag showing an O2C or February third week build date and then code 14 top and bottom for paint indicating Cortez silver and then 755 black vinyl bench seat built in the Van Nuys Los Angeles plant. Um, we'll get into some of the close up here of the serious, very serious rust issues along the base of the windshield. And there's probably going to be some work in the channel. The windshield obviously is still in it, so once until you get it out, it's gonna be hard to tell. But here on the other side, same thing, pretty serious rust. But I do have, as mentioned in the auction listing, there is a complete cowl section donor that can be used for that repair there's some rod holes along this a pillar here and again until you get that windshield out actually you can see here underneath there's going to be some rot here it was an ac car as you can see the ac box is still there it does still have the disc brake spindles and backing plates and rotors the calipers are not there but those are $25 parts store items pretty easy to source has a four bolt top plate across the top for V8 radiator and previous owner or one of the previous owners uh, had the body off the frame and had sp painted the frame and actually put some new suspension parts in. You can see there's actually new, or at one time there were new bushings in the upper control arms. I think their ball joints were replaced at that time as well. Um, and so that was all off at one point. This fender is a replacement fender. It was off of a Malibu, actually. You can see the upper trim holes across the top. And also it had a probably a 307 or 350 emblem. Just something that was put on because the car didn't have a fender when I got it. Doors appear to be fairly straight and solid. And you can see this was actually painted a probably a 
darker shadow gray, maybe closer to shadow gray color on top of the Cortez silver at some point. But these definitely are the original panels here, the rear quarter and the door rear quarter here on the driver's side is going to need to be replaced. This one's had it. It's got some rust issues all around the wheel wells and actually even across the top here, rust hole where the quarter window is. But if this was a, or one way to verify that this was a real SS car is there's no evidence that anyone did anything here to remove the studs that would have been on the door for the upper body molding. This would be very hard to hide on an unrestored car like this. Same thing with the quarter. There actually are holes that are drilled in the quarters on Malibu's. This does not have quarter holes for that upper trim. And this definitely is the original door as evidenced by the original GM sticker with the VIN 171918. Um, and then you can see actually the original silver color actually underneath. So when they painted it this darker gray, they actually masked off the jams and did that too. But you can see the Cortez silver. And again, the doors appear to be pretty solid. I don't see any major rust underneath. It's kind of hard to tell in this light here. But the doors have all the window guts windows do roll up and down easily obviously the door panels will need to be replaced they're pretty much junk car has a tilt column which is functional works smoothly has the tack engage cluster in it with 5500 red line but it does have a 72 style dash as evidenced by the seatbelt warning light this was actually a dash that I installed in the car because it came without a dash when I got it and it was just one that I had picked up when I was sourcing parts Floor pans in the front, actually uh, not that bad. There's a couple pinholes there, the driver's footwell. Um, but the floor pans themselves in the front probably could be salvaged. Same thing in the driver's side. There's a couple pinholes. Here, but I think pan itself could be saved. The car does still have the kick down switch for the turbo 400 which would be a big block only and also I think that switch is also used for cowl induction. There is no wiring harness in here again I put this dash in the car and so um, just because it didn't have anything in it. The car has Functional lock cylinders, the steering column will lock, and this key will also work both of the door locks. So it's a matching key set, the rectangular key. That works nice and easy. Staying with the back. Uh, the driver's side going to the back seat area again the driver's side passenger footwell looks nice and solid i don't think this would need to be replaced underneath the back seat there are some small pinholes here I, th I don't think that this would need to be replaced here entirely and
quarter windows have all the guts inside, so they work. Headliner was removed, um, but the tack strips are, looks like they're all still there. Actually, there may be a small one missing in the back. Um, and that back seat is out of a different model, but it is a correct 70A body back seat and the bottom I have just out so we could take a look at the floor pan here. The bottom is actually out, laying behind the car. Moving to the back window area again, some pretty extensive rust here. This was a non-vinyl top car. It had 14, code 14 top and bottom, so it was painted, not vinyl top. But nevertheless, it had some serious rust issues. Looking at the driver's side, this is some nasty rust here. Down at the base of the rear window. Fortunately, there's patch panels that are made specifically for that area. And then on the passenger side here, looking across the top, some significant rust there and along the sides. And also, again, on the bottom. Deck lid appears to be fairly solid. I didn't see any major damage to it. And the rear bumper looks to be a core that somebody could use to have replated. Take a look inside the trunk. Usually with cars that have back window rust, rust you're going to have some issues in the weather strip gutter and across the top here you can see there's the rust is uh, pretty significant. Hard to get it to focus here. There we go. Yeah, this is some pro probably some areas that are going to have to be cut out. And definitely along the back, well, you can see there on the quarter, again that quarter, driver's quarter can be replaced. But along the back, back edge of this trunk gutter. This is rusted out here. This is going to need to be sur surgically repaired here. But again, I believe there's a repair panel that's available for that. But all across the back there. But the trunk otherwise, I believe the one of the previous owners, is probably the guy who took the body off the frame, had some trouble with one of the body mount bolts and uh, so he ended up cutting into the trunk to free up that cage nut. Uh, but the rest of the trunk, actually, again, this, um, I don't think you're going to need to replace the entire pan. There is, on the back of the tail panel here, there's some rot, there's a rot hole there, but the rest of the trunk, I mean, everyone has their different approaches. I tend to try to use or preserve as much of the original sheet metal as possible rather than hacking out an entire panel to just to, because you've got a small area of rust, but that's for the next person to figure out what they want to do. But again, trunk not rotted out completely. And a, the trunk hinges work as they should, so whatever rust is at the base of the back window, it didn't get into the, or it doesn't appear to have gotten into the structural area of the, uh, where the trunk hinges mount. Looks like somebody ground off stripes at some point. See at least the outline of where the stripes would have been. Looking at this quarter, this quarter doesn't have the damage to the extent that the other side does. And again, looking, if this was an original Malibu car, this would have evidence that there had been an upper body molding here and then again with the, along the door as well. There would have been studs here all across the door um, that would need to be ground off. And I don't, that would be, how, it would be very, it would be very difficult to try to duplicate something, an untouched appearance to that. So, um, and this quarter, I guess it's a judgment call as far as whether this would actually have to be replaced. It does definitely have rot at the bottom, but the wheel lips, lips do not appear to have be rotted out. And, and with Western cars out here in the Northwest, we don't get rocker panel rust. And so 
that usually is not an issue with cars here and this door again another original door as evidenced by the paint matching the rest of the weathered look of the car and there's the Cortez silver peeking out from underneath that door weather strip so all indications is this the this is the original door on the passenger side as well and again all the guts are in this window give another look at the passenger side footwell where those couple pinholes are there is a glove box with a new GM key so glove box is a locking glove box this seat has a 7172 Chevelle pattern so of course it's not the original seat from the car but it is a correct seat for it a little better look here at the passenger side rear footwell and I don't again I believe this will clean up uh, and would not have to be cut out and replaced I don't see pinholes at this point but on this side is where of the all the different areas in the floor pan this is the one that has the most significant rust here this is underneath the rear seat on the passenger side you can see and that section has been rotted out this is actually somewhat of a common area for a bodies to rust out and you can see the frame that was painted and the body was off so this area would have to be repaired and uh, again with this quarter window all the guts regulators etc are in are inside and so no parts to chase down there rough here this fender almost guaranteed that it's the original fender to the car as evidenced by Cortez silver paint on the inner apron but it does have rot. Has some repair area down here by the front marker light and then also has rot down at the heel. And so, could be repaired, but someone may just wanna go the reproduction route or source the good used fender or an NOS piece as opposed to trying to run that fender. See if I can pan away here. Uh, look at the car in its totality. And we'll take a quick look underneath. So again, this is a Pacific Northwest car, so we get moisture here, but we don't use rolled salt. So the floors, at least the undersides of bodies, tend to be pretty solid. I've had this car stored indoors and since I got it. About six years ago, seven years ago, I don't remember how many years, and so we don't have the crusty rust issues like Midwest and East Coast areas from the road salt. I'll take a look from the back here, see if I can get something to focus. Gas tank has been removed, and Again, as mentioned in the auction listing, there was the remnant of the original build sheet showing it had a 350 horse, 396, showing the air cleaner decal information. The original 12 bolt has been swapped out. This is a 10 bolt axle that's in it now. And so, obviously along with the motor and transmission, so the complete original drivetrain was re removed at some point on this car. So. You can see trunk drop-offs from the inside any area here or again this quarter I think uh, a skilled body man could probably save that quarter if 
they were compelled to do so. We'll do one more quick walk around here. I guess last thing is to take a look at the uh, VIN tag here, if we can get the light on it. 136370L171918. So, that doesn't really help. 171918, which matches the title and again the door jam ID sticker. Looking forward to seeing this go to a new home. Somebody who can restore it back to its glory. This is what I had hoped to do, but it's time to pass it on to someone who can get it done.